Buffett is one of the greatest investors of all time. He has a net worth of $100 billion at the time of making this video, and he has had an average annual compound rate of around 20%. To give you a comparison, the S&P 500 index gets an annual return of 8%. So what's his philosophy of investing? Number 7. Science of Hitting The man who has a net worth equivalent to 0.43% of the US GDP says that the best thing you can do in investing is to say no, if you think about it. When you have money, people come to you with all sorts of ideas. Suddenly, your cousin Sal's business to print stickers for lampshades seems lucrative to you, and you invest. Buffett says that investing in things you don't understand is the biggest mistake any investor can make. He gives the example of a baseball player in the strike zone. This picture was published in his book Science of Hitting. The author, Ted Williams, has divided the strike zone into 77 squares. The underlying philosophy is this. He needed to wait for the ball to be just right before he could strike. If he did this all the time, his average would be over 350. And if he struck at something in the lower right corner, his average would be 275. Buffett claims that it's the same in investing. If people are screaming at you, swing, you bum, just ignore them. Don't even think about them. You don't have to know what 1,000 companies will do. Heck, you don't even have to know what 50 of them will do. You have to know what only a couple of them will do to make a fortune. And you only swing or buy when the ball is in your sweet spot. But how do you know where your sweet spot is? Number 6. Define your circle of competence Well, to define your investing sweet spot, you would have to smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, you would have to define your circle of competence. This is something that Warren Buffett talks about in many of his speeches. He says that your circle of competence is what you understand. If you know how a type of business generates money and how they improve the bottom line, you might know all of this stuff about the restaurant business. But that might not be true about a biotech company. If you understand all of these things, you add them to your circle of competence. If you don't understand them, you need to stay away from them. If there is only one business model you understand, you will do wonderfully. You don't have to understand 20 industries to make a ton of money in. You only need to have a concrete and well-defined circle of competence and work within it. You need time before you know the inner workings of an industry. And there's no better way of increasing your circle of competence than by number 5. Investing in yourself Whenever someone asks Warren Buffett what is the best way to invest $1,000, he always smiles and says the same thing. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Now, you've probably heard this a thousand times by now. So let's dive a little deeper into the meaning of this advice. First of all, if you want to be a good investor and you're asking other people how to invest your money, we're sad to tell you this, but you're not a very good investor. This shouldn't get you down. If anything, it should motivate you to learn more. And the only way you learn more is if you invest in yourself. You wouldn't hear Buffett talking about this, but there are hundreds of thousands of books on any topic under the sun. If you don't like reading, there are podcasts and YouTube channels dedicated to learning some skills. Then there are paid courses and seminars. Most of the information is free. Some of the information is paid. And if you feel like you want to do something but don't know how to do it, it's time to invest in yourself. Because at the end of the day, that will be the thing that brings you the highest ROI. It's not stocks, bonds, real estate, or index funds. It's the knowledge you have and your application of that very knowledge. Number 4. Look for 3 things in managers This is another big thing whenever you want to invest. It has to do with finding the right people for the job. Before you invest in the business and you do fundamental and technical analysis and you feel like you have a good grasp on the business, don't invest. Not just yet. You need to analyze the people inside that business. Warren Buffett has found that the best managers are those who have three unique qualities. Integrity, intelligence, and high energy. And it's very important to keep those things in that order. In other words, if someone doesn't have integrity, don't even bother looking for intelligence and high energy. If a manager has no integrity, you want them lazy and stupid. Because the last thing you would need in a company is someone with no moral compass who is highly energetic and intelligent. Number 3. Buy wonderful business at a fair price Before he became an institutional investor and started his own holding company, 
Buffett used the cigar butt strategy. That's like walking down the street and finding a cigar butt on the sidewalk. It's wet and nasty, but there's still one puff left in it. You pick it up and you smoke it. That might seem gross, but it is similar to how Warren Buffett invested his money back when he started. He would find companies that were quote unquote smoked all the way through. He would buy a share of their stock, make a quick buck, and he would keep looking for more of those cigar butts. Today, he doesn't advise anyone to use this strategy. Aside from the countless hours you would have to spend looking for cigar butt companies, you cannot make a lot of money doing this. That's why today, he would rather buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Number 2. Look for Intrinsic Value Intrinsic value is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of the business is. Investing boils down to simply investing $1 today and hoping to get 5 or 10 of $50 in the future. For example, if you had $242 billion to buy out the entire Coca-Cola company, would you do it or would you take that money and invest it in something else that would give you a much higher cash flow? That's what investing boils down to. Could you get more cash flow on your money if you were to invest that money somewhere else? That is the job of a stock analyst and an investor. It's finding out the cash flow of the stock. Number 1. Never lose money And once you invest in a business, the most important rule is never lose money. Whatever you do, it's very important not to lose money. Many people when they hear this think it's some blanket statement. But let us explain why this is very important. You see, if you were to invest $1,000 in Apple and you lost 10% of your money, you now have $900 in Apple. If you took that money out and invested it in an S&P 500 index fund like VU, assuming the average yearly growth is 8%, you would need to wait one and a half years just to be back at $1,000 or to break even. Now, imagine if you lost 50% of your Apple stock after investing your money would need to double to break even. In other words, your 500 would need to make another 500 to be back at zero. If you lost 90% of your money, then you need to make 900% of your money. If you invested it in the S&P 500, you would not be back at $1,000 in the next 30 years. So it's more important not to lose money than it is to make money. See you in the next video.